Hi everyone, I'm Drake Pledger, the Flintlock Operator, and this is my gear. Let's find out about it. Hi everyone, Drake Pledger with Flint Lock Operator. A couple weeks ago, I posted a picture on my Instagram account showing the contents of my haversack, and I got some questions about what some of the gear was and how I use it. So I thought today we'd go over a big portion of the gear that I use. Now, a couple disclaimers before we start. Number one, I'm still working on the accuracy of this kit. So what you have here is not a finished product. It's an ongoing development and journey of exploration into what is uh, into pieces of kit and gear that are gonna be more and more useful as well as more and more historically accurate. So the next point is not all of this, I don't use all the gear that I carry around here, not all the time. So I, I kind of put a lot of things together here. Uh, and so this is, this would be what I would classify a very bulked out kit. So I might not necessarily carry all this stuff around at the same time, especially depending upon the season. And the other thing is that there are some pieces from this kit that are missing that I will be replacing, uh, that I'll be getting replacements for very soon. One of those is a trade all. I used to have a trade all that I really liked that I made back a few years ago. And I think I lost it on my last trip to Kentucky. So that's one of the big pieces of kit that, that would have been carried around in a frontiersman or pioneers uh, in their kit that I don't have. So that, that's just one example, but there are probably quite a few examples of pieces of gear like that. So let's go ahead and dive in to my blanket roll. All right, the, the first gear item is gonna be my blanket roll here. And inside the blanket, blanket roll, right now, I just have two wool blankets. I have a twin size and a queen size wool blanket. And although they're not very, they're not very uh, historically accurate, they're both green, one of them is made out of pure merino wool. The other one's one of the old Italian uh, surplus reproduction blankets. It's what I have right now. It's what I'm using. And they have actually both worked very, very well for me. They've both, they've both kept me warm. They've both kept, um, uh, kept the dampness off me, even when it is cold and wet. So I trust those two pieces of gear. And that's one of the pieces, that's one of the aspects of my gear that I will be hoping to replace in the future. On the outside, I have an oil cloth tarp, and this one's five by seven, and it's made out of canvas. And this is this is one of the items that uh, that is maybe up in the air if if it was actually carried by frontiersmen on foot. We know that they carried around oil cloth coverings when they were uh, traveling by horse, by wagon, or by by water. But uh, on foot, I'm I decided to throw this and include this in the kit because this is gonna be one of the things that's gonna help keep me dry and safer than if it was just wool blankets. All right, holding it together, I have a leather tump line. This is one I, this is one I made and it works pretty well. It's probably not the most historically accurate thing, but I did my best to make it look like it was made out of some sort of a bark tanned hide. So I dyed it this dark, brown, dark reddish brown and I hope it gets across that point pretty well. So let me unroll this and uh and we'll start working on the rest of the gear all right now i've got my bedroll laid out and as you can see i've got my oil cloth tarp underneath i've got my queen size wool blanket i've got my twin size wool blanket here and what i like how i like to use both of these pieces of kit is i'll i'll do the old burrito roll with the queen size wool blanket and then i will put this one on top of me to really hold a lot of that heat in. What I find is using uh, the, the multiple layers of the queen size and then the one layer on top to hold everything in with the twin size, I find works really, really well. And I've actually slept down to mid forties using this, uh, this uh, Italian surplus wool blanket and a really cheap wool blanket uh, in tandem and it kept me pretty warm the whole night. All right, so before we get into the depths of my kit, Here's my tump line. It's got about a 30 to 36 inch strap section to go around my shoulders. And the tails are about eight feet long. Now, the leather that I use for this, I actually pre-stretched out. So these aren't gonna really stretch that much. They might bounce a little bit, but they're not gonna stretch. So, and they're pretty stinking strong. 
and it's strong enough to hold up uh, this 15 or 20 pound bedroll with no problem. So I'm sure I haven't tested this to its limits, but I'm confident that it'll serve me well. All right, one additional thing that would normally be in my bedroll, but wasn't in there today, would be extra pairs of moccasins. So I've got, I've got two extra pairs of moccasins here, in addition to my buckle shoes, that I'd be carrying around. And obviously, it's well documented that frontiersmen and the Indians were carrying around multiple pairs of moccasins and the means to repair them. So I've got my two pairs of moccasins here, and those are gonna, those are gonna save my feet if my shoes wear out or if one pair of moccasins fails. All right, as far as the things I carry on my body, this is uh, my reproduction military canteen. I know that in progressive reenactments, carrying around a canteen isn't really a popular thing to do, but it works for me right now. I'll probably end up carrying water around in another manner, but for right now, I really like, I really like using this. Uh, this is a uh, reproduction made by Hot Dip Tin, and it served me really well. And as you can see, it's pretty battered and beat up. I've stepped on it, I've dropped it, I've had it for about six or seven years, and it served me really well. All right, as far as the tools I'm carrying around on my body, I've got my tomahawk back here, which is a tomahawk that I modified. So it's a cold steel tomahawk head that I modified, so I flattened out the head. I made sure I took a little bit of material off the, off the, the cutting bit here to make it a little bit more smooth from its rough from its rough uh, casting and drop forging, and I added a new hickory handle. So it's affixed with a wedge now, it's permanently affixed. I do not use this for throwing, so this is uh, primarily a combat weapon, but it also can be used as a lightweight uh, wood cutting tool or if I need to, uh, need to help butcher game. Next we have my two belt knives. So I have this one, which is more of a, this is a, has a nine inch blade on it and, and it's more of a French style trade knife. And I have this one, which is, I've had this knife for probably a decade or more. And at times this has been my primary knife for many, many, many years. This is actually an old hickory butcher knife that I modified. I cut the, cut the little clip off at the top and I, I made the, I modified the edge design a little bit and I put a new handle on it. And it looks pretty stinking close to an English trade, trade knife or scalping knife. I've been to reenactments with it. I've been to rendezvous with it. No one's ever complained about it. Nobody's ever said anything. So I keep using it. Is it completely historically accurate? No, but you know what? This was a piece of kit that worked really well for me and still does. Next is my powder horn and shooting pouch. I actually made this shooting pouch uh, just a couple months ago and I've really enjoyed it so far. It's a lot smaller than my other one and I use this one for my, for my brown best musket. So I keep about 25 to 30 round ball in here. I keep extra flints, I keep a, a turn screw, and I keep my wool patches inside of here. Well, I don't keep very much inside of my shooting pouch, uh, but any of my other tools that I would need to, to run my flint lock or cleaning equipment, I keep in my larger kit. My powder horn, I've had this thing since I was about 10 years old. This was one of the first pieces of Frontier kit that was given to me. I've since replaced, I've replaced the stopper on both ends. I've just had this plain leather, leather tie for a, for a shoulder strap for many, many years. And I've tried my hand at doing some basic, very crude scrimshaw on it. So it means a lot to me, it keeps my powder dry so far. It works for me, I'm gonna keep using it. All right, one piece of kit that I really like using is this uh, about three by three linen bandana. And this can be used for so many functions. Obviously, wiping your face, uh, cleaning your hands off, wiping your gun down. It, it's a piece of cloth and it, it's so multi-purpose that I can't even begin to tell you all the things that I've used this for. But one of my favorite things to use this is you can actually put gear in here, roll it up and put it around your waist and basically treat it like a, a fanny pack or like a, one of the old style mid military butt packs. And that's one, of the, that's one of the ways that I carry around extra gear if it's gonna bulge out my haversack too much and I'm not carrying around my bird roll. So three by three linen bandana, love it. Right, now the moment you've all been waiting for, inside the haversack itself. So I don't always carry around a tin cup, but right now I've got it on there. If I'm carrying around some sort of a chocolate or coffee or tea, I actually don't like coffee or tea very much, but if I did, I would be carrying this. I do like hot chocolate though, so when I make hot chocolate, I carry this cup around. So I've got my, <coughs> 
So I've got my tin cup hanging on on the outside. Digging into the actual contents of my haversack here, we have my copper kettle. And inside my, what I keep inside of my copper kettle will vary from trip to trip or depending on how I feel, pa feel about packing my, packing my gear on any given day. Uh, first thing we're gonna pull out is my fishing kit. I've got probably about 20 hooks in here. I've got a piece of beeswax, uh, a lead weight made out of a smashed bullet. I've got, and I've got a couple links of linen waxed fishing line for obvious reasons. Now the next thing we pull out of the pack is this, uh, this hank of about 30 feet of tarred hemp line. This is actually what would have been used on ships and boats at the time. And I'm gonna use this as like a fishing line and use one of the pieces of linen as a leader or just any time that I need, that I'm gonna to need to have a, a, a piece of cordage out in the elements and out in the rain. We've got some leather tugs in here, more line for camp usage. And now we're starting to get into the meat, meat and potatoes of my kit. This is my fire kit. And here I have, very carefully pull this out, I have my tin full of charred material. So there you see there. I have a bunch of linen flax. And this is useful for starting fires as well as uh, cleaning guns. And I have an assortment of, let's see in here, I've got a, got a hand dipped candle, got a big old piece of flint there, and I've got some pieces of fat wood. And rest in there, piece of flint, fat wood, and wax, beeswax. All right, I'm not gonna dig everything out of this. This is my emergency tinder bag. So this is one of the, this is very heavily oiled and waxed for as much water resistance as possible. There's just a, there's a bunch of uh, cedar bark in here and, rant, and I honestly don't know what all's in here. So it's just stuff that I've picked up over the years from in the woods and things that I thought might be useful to have as fire starting material. So my emergency tinder bag. All right, next is my 18th century wallet. If I don't wanna carry around my modern wallet in my kit, I'll go ahead and stick some money and some of my cards in here. So this just provides a more period correct way to carry around my modern personal items. I mentioned moccasin repair er earlier and this is my piece of leather for repairing moccasins. And now we're getting down to the very bottom. I have a piece of linen for extra patching for my gun, for repairing my clothing, and also just for, it's, it's a piece of cloth, so it's multi-purpose. Now let's see, let's just go ahead and dump the rest of the bag out and see what we got in here. Ah, my salt horn. I've got a ton of fat wood at the bottom. One of my worst fears is running out of fire starting material when everything's wet outside and I'm fairly confident I could get a fire going with this material right here, especially since I use a trick of lighting a candle from the char tin itself. So I can, as long as my charred material is, is dry, then I can get a sure flame with the candle and then light as much fat wood as I need to to get a fire going. All right, extra linen line. I've got a ton of extra patching material down at the bottom for my gun. These aren't accurate at all, but I have two whetstones here. One is an Arkansas stone and one is just a regular whetstone. I cut them down to look a little bit more period, period correct. And this is one of the pieces of the kit that is useful right now, but I'd really like to replace with either a proper 18th century sharpening stone or a proper stone I just find in a river somewhere. All right, the last thing I have at the bottom of the bag are just three extra hand dipped candles. Again, I'm one of my worst fears is not being able to make a fire when I need to. So I've bulked out, bulked out my fire kit to make sure that I can make fire when I need to. Now, lastly, I have my belt pouch and the contents of this are, are some of the pieces that are going to change most often and most frequently. And speaking of which I need to 
exchange some of this out when I get home. I have my 18th century reproduction compass. This is a piece of gear that I'd like to get a much nicer reproduction of. I have another length of linen line, another piece of beeswax. I have this blanket pin that also has a turn screw on it and has an all, and has an all um, needle on it. This is not historically accurate at all. This is one of the pieces that I need to just stop carrying in my kit. So shame on me. All right, oh, I have a Band-Aid in there. Don't know why that's in there. I've got an extra couple pieces of flints. I have a uh, 50 caliber bullet. I don't know why that's in there. And looks like I have a smashed 69 caliber bullet that I found after I shot a tree. And at the very bottom, I've got some extra fishing hooks. I also have a needle. Usually I have another needle, but I think I swiped the other needle for another project I was working on. So I need to replace that needle. All right, everyone. Well, this is my kit. I hope you enjoyed this exclusive look into Flintlock Operator's trekking and reenactment woodsman gear. I would love to hear back from y'all about what you think about each piece of my kit and especially what I could be doing better. I'm always looking and striving to be, do, to be improving my impression, to be improving my pieces of kit and improving the skills that I, uh, skills how I use this stuff. So go ahead and tear me apart in the comments. I know y'all are chomping at the bit to do so. And on that note, like, comment, subscribe if you like what's going on here, because there's gonna be a lot more content coming very soon. And especially once we get towards the cooler weather, we're actually gonna be able to get out into the world and use this stuff and do living history as we're intended to. Thank you guys so much for watching today and we'll see you on down the trail in the next video. All right, the boys want to race, so we're going to give it to them. Ready, set, go. Good job, wild boys. Good job.